Hello, good evening. With me, two great poets. Uh, as you all of are aware now, uh, Amir Uji, one of the most renowned poets in the world, and uh, he has been given Golden Riyadh Award, which is next to Nobel Prize. And we are fortunate and uh, we are honored, rather, having Amir or with us third time in Odisha art and literature. You can see that he is uh, one of the patronizer of this uh, festival. He plays a lot of uh, a role to see how best it can be organized. Thank you, Amir, for being with us. Hashanal Abdullah is also another fine poet uh, who hails from Bangladesh, but uh, he settled uh, in states and right in Bangla. And uh, he runs one uh, very important uh, um, uh, literary magazine called Sabda Kutcha. He is a wonderful poet. Now, <coughs> our today's theme is poetry and power. Let me explain the concept behind this. Uh, state is a power, always. And a poet, poets, through their poetry, always show the finger. And there are thousands of examples around the world about uh, the how the poetry and the power works. I would like to ask Amir, he is from Israel, how the poets are treated in Israel? Uh, I would like to take the subject from the very beginning, you know, poetry and power, power of poetry, poetry of power. So, if we think about the power of poetry, people uh, ask, can poetry change the world, make it a better place? And uh, my answer to that was always, uh, no, poetry cannot do that. Poetry cannot change the world. Art cannot change the world. Who can change the world? People can change the world. But what poetry does is uh, speaks to people in a different way. Not through power and politics and prestige, but Poetry is a rebellion, basically. And that's why it was frowned upon throughout generations. And why is it a rebellion? Because it's an invitation to think and feel for yourself. And not to obey, not to go into this grinder where people become automatic in the system. They go and uh, make a penny and another penny and they watch some TV and they play uh, some computer game and they go to vote and they go shopping and that's it. This is the system of slavery. Poetry is the system of freedom because when you enter a poem, just like when you write a poem, you are free to your own soulscapes to your own imagination, to your own uh, ideas. And when a, a writer writes to you, to, the, to a reader, he actually suggests you a reality to enter, to explore, to see how you feel, to see what you think, only you. And poetry is a dialogue. It's not a dialogue in the sense that I write a poem and then the reader will write me back a letter. No. It's a dialogue in a much deeper sense. It's a dialogue because the reader answers with his own life. If I write about a leaf 
you know, a leaf fell on the ground, and so I laid there. I, I, I too laid like this. Yeah. Okay. So one can think about the day uh, she was divorced. Another and felt completely out. Another guy that uh, the day he was uh, fired maybe and felt useless. And the third guy or girl may think about a day of meditation and uh, you know peace, where she f she was just laying like this. Each one brings his own life, his own experiences, his own emotions, his own ideas into a poem. A poem is just an invitation to be creative. You cannot uh, read a poem and not respond to it this way. Otherwise, you didn't read it. It's only dry words. But a poem is an experience. So therefore, even the most uh, minor poet, let's say writing about uh, Rose, he creates a reality that was never there before. And that's why uh, it's a threat to people that, uh, you know, to churches, to regimes, that try to control poetry throughout the ages. Religiously, politically, you know, Soviets or Catholics, doesn't matter. Because it's uh, unexpected. Uh, you don't know what to expect from it. It's alive. It's every time it's something new is created, you cannot control it. And when people feel and think for themselves, you cannot control them. It's a problem. And creativity is the very core of every society. Creativity doesn't end in a poem. It's everything in society. It's, it's the life of society. That if it will flourish or will die. Without, without creativity, it's a dying society. So. This dialogue of poetry and power uh, goes very deep. It goes to the foundations of the system of uh, human society and, of, and to the very core of what it is, what does it mean to be an individual, to be a soul that feels and thinks for yourself. So poetry is the opposite of power structures. It's a rebellion. Thank you, Amir, and I'm so privileged uh, sitting with this distinguished poet, both of them, Amir Or and uh, uh, my friend Manudash. Uh, Amir Or already set up the foundation of the subject. Let me take it a little further. In 1913, Tagore got the Nobel Prize. What happened to us? what power it was given to us. We immediately felt that this part of the world were enriched. Our language, I'm not talking about only Bengali, I'm talking about our whole area. We thought, wow, the Nobel Prize just started and he was the, he is one of the non-European poet got Nobel Prize, and he was from this part. So it boosts up everybody. Not only me, not only you, not only my son, and everyone. And we use that example. So my foundation is very strong. My language is very strong. That we know already. Give me, let me give you another example. Uh, Kazi Nazrul Islam, who was born in India, he was called the rebel poet, Bidrohi Kobi. All of a sudden, he wrote a poem called Bidrohi. Balobir chiro unnato mamoshiri shir shihari nato shiro ishikhar himatrir. Many people say this poem is breaking away from Tagore. So he is now showing, showing through poetry, through his creation, that we could do a lot other things. We are beer. We are, we are, we are soldiers. We could do so many things. 
So it also boost up our energy indifferently. So it empowers us. It let us think or open, it opens many windows in front of us. Now it may not work within a day or two. I now say that that poem with Rohi actually changed the whole generation dealing with each other. British, that was the first poem against British in this subcontinent. Think about it. He went to jail for his poem, not that one, another one he, he wrote, and he went to jail. And Tagore, uh, he, he actually started a uh, uh, hunger strike, and Tagore personally wrote to him to give up that he wrote that our literature claims you. Please give up hunger, hunger strike. So see, a poet with his word, he said of the foundation of liberation of India. May not be the way I'm saying it, quote unquote. But we could not see it right away. It took time. I also one more example and then I'll give back to Manudas. Recently I wrote a poem, a story of a killer. As he said about insect. We every one of us kill insect, don't we? Yeah. Every one of us one of us are killers, don't we? We are. But we kill for survival. Did we ever think that we are a killer? All of a sudden, as a poet, I was thinking, oh my goodness, I kill all these animals. Sometimes we kill them for nothing. A ant is running away, I said, step on it. I could avoid it. It reminds me not to do these things. Though it's, a, it's my creation, but now I'm thinking, should I kill this ant or not? Well, survival of the fetus, that goes that every animal kills the other animals and they live by that. So poetry is power, it also reminds us things that we do things that we may not, we, we could avoid. Obviously, there is more power about language. It changes the language. Every poet has a different language within the language. His English and my English, his poems and my poem, his poem are completely different. If you are great poets, follow all the great poets, their languages are different. Their way of thinking are different. So yes, it's not a power directly affect us, but it does in the long run. Thank you. Thank you, Harshanal uh, and Amir. Uh, now I take another dimension of the power. Uh, you talked about 1913, Ravi Thakur's uh, Nobel Prize and then um, the poem Vidrohi, means Drivel. It reminds me, uh, 500 years before, because the Odia language is very old language and we have got the status of uh, being the classical, sixth classical language in the country. Uh, government of India has uh, uh, acknowledged it. Uh, because of its uh, uh, rootedness and it's a thousand years old um, language and literature the existing in Odia. 500 years ago, one such poet in Odisha called Dina Krishnadas. He was a, a poet in the court of uh, the king at Puri. Uh, in India, as you are aware, well aware that uh, people 
uh, used to keep in poets in their court so that the yellow guys praise in the name of uh, the king, even if you write. And uh, sometimes the poems are written by the poet, but in the last line, uh, it is written as if it was written by the king. So that was the system prevailing at that time. And uh, Dina Krishna Das was asked to write such poems to which he defied to the power. No one. I'll not do that. If at all I write, I'll write the Supreme Lord, the Lord Jagannath, the, uh, the savior of the world, but not to any human being. Be he, be he the uh, king. Ultimately, he was punished. He was uh, asked to leave Puri. He was uh, thrown out, and, the, uh, and he resides in the outskirts in the uh, leprosy colony, contaminated by leprosy. But he was coming every day to uh, the Lord Jagannath's uh, temple. Before uh, the temple, he was praying the God in praising of God. He was also have lot of uh, poems, couple of poems. In that one line, what he, he told, he wrote about the the role of a poet for the power. Kabija kare murkokhu stuti, sethi ru badi nahi vipatti, sethi ki prati mariva kati, chati ki prati bhala hai. There is no bad thing than a poet uh, eulogizing the king. Uh, sorry, eulogizing or uh, praising an idiot. And uh, it, is a, it is as good as a stabbing on his chest. So, perhaps that is the first poem written in Odisha so far, uh, written against the king. So, it, has, it must be happening throughout the world. Many, we know many rebel poets. Uh, do you have any rebel poets like this, uh, Amir, in Israel? Do you remember? Yeah, say a few words because I will forget what to say. Dina Krishna Dash. Yeah. So, Dina Dash was the yes. uh, poet. Shihan Karivan Nirana Choiva Thakiva Dharani Maji. Chandidash was the poet of about the same time he wrote Shabar Upore Manushutto Tahar Upore Nai. Man, you are the supreme being. There is nothing above you. Not only is empowering human, it is also saying everybody is equal. Good. Well, uh, in Israel, nobody is uh, oppressed. Uh, for poetry, that at, at least not directly. Uh, pe you know, people can say whatever they want. Uh, the real power nowadays is in TV, in uh, in the media, in the, you know, shaping uh, the opinion of people is not done through poetry. This belongs to medieval times. You know, like this was the medieval propaganda through poetry. But uh, this is not the case anymore. Poetry has a totally different position uh, in the modern world, I think. And uh, in the modern world, there is a very uh, different way of how de to distract people from themselves. It's the opposite of poetry. It's like a, it's much more visual. It's uh, like when TV comes to your face. You don't need to think. It's true already. Yeah, so it's uh, the message, the content, the form. Everything is just imprinted in you. It, uh, it's not like a poem that you have to think and to imagine and to feel. And I think that's why uh, nowadays, and it's it has an entertainment part, poetry, definitely, but uh, it asks you to be active. It asks you to use your potential. And that's why less and less people uh, are answering this challenge. Because uh, the system, as I said before, is a system of slavery. And first of all, 
mental slavery. The rest just comes as a, an outcome of this. Once you are into this uh, rat race, okay, and you believe in it. That's the, that's the main thing. If you don't believe it, in it, people would rebel every day. But the thing is that there's no need for policemen. The policemen are inside the mind of each of, and everyone in society. And again, what I say, poetry is a rebellion, but it's for the few. If you are already brainwashed, you will not go for poetry. Well, uh, Hashanal, uh, could you just tell me the, any rebel poet in the 500, besides Chandidas? Chandidas is a part of uh, uh, all the cultures, <laughs> the cultures we yeah. belong to. So, uh, tell me about the, any uh, past poets. Well, uh, at this moment, you know that there was a war between Pakistan and Bangladesh, East Pakistan, 1971 and we got uh, our freedom from there, and uh, three million people were killed by Pakistanis. My father was one of them. Uh, at that time, poetry actually enhanced the soldiers, the freedom fighters. So Shamsur Rahman wrote, Shadinata Tumi, Robi Thakure, Rajor Kovita, Vinashikan. Shadinata Tumi Kaji Nazrul, Jhakra Chule, Rebab Gridala, Namohan Purush, Sisti Shukhe, Rulla Shekapa. The strength of this poem actually was chanted, this poem was chanted by the uh, uh, freedom fighters, soldiers, our soldiers. We, we didn't have organized soldiers at that time, but freedom fighters, they were organized in different places. And I must say, Mukti Foj, I must say, uh, I must thank uh, uh, Bharat, India, because India uh, uh, accepted one million refugees from Bangladesh and, you know, gave us a lot, otherwise we would not be uh, getting our freedom. So when there is, a, well, there is Humayun Azad who was actually killed for his own poem. Humayun Azad recently killed, was killed for his own writing. Not only poems, for his own writing, for his free thinking. So when, look at this, there is a fundamentalist group, there is a martial group. When there is martial law, they stop free thinking. Do not, they stop all the presses. Because they know that when the free thinking and the presses are open, they could not be in that power. At the same time, Fundamentalists, they don't like you freely think. You think the way they think. But poetry is the only mechanism they will, uh, it will enforce you to think the way you think. So there are, there are poets, there are uh, uh, like Helal Hafiz at the time, another poet, uh, Rafiq Azad. In that generation of the 60s, they actually wrote a lot of poems that still when I read them, my you know, blood warms up, you know, it happens. Thank you. In Odia, what you told about the 1960s and 70s, we had also wonderful poets, those who uh, dared the government also. Uh, one is Sachi Rautrai, who was a progressive writer, then a turn was a postmodernist. He brought the modern poetry to Orisha first. He's the father of modern poetry. Yeah, prior to that, he, say he was a, a uh, left-oriented poet, progressive poet, because he had, had his, uh, all his life, he was in uh, Kolkata. Another was Manmohan Mishra, and uh, from them, the prominent uh, poet was uh, Rabi Singh. He has just passed recently, two, three years before. He was very, very loud and he was known as the uh, uh, Kaji Najrul of uh, Odisha. Oh. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, Rabi Singh. Singh. Uh, not this Rabi Singh in the morning who took. Okay. Uh, yeah, it is another Rabi Singh. Uh, and uh, last I remember, uh, Mr. Kumar Mahanti. His, his book we have studied, we uh, released, 
the biography of Wangar. He was in 1975 when the Mrs. Gandhi uh, proclaimed an emergency in India on June, the uh, last part of the June, no, June 26th, the 25th. Um, he was uh, working as a senior police officer, but uh, he dared the, uh, uh, this uh, claiming up uh, and, uh, and wrote and he was uh, placed under suspension for years. After that, he was taken back, but th these are the things. The poets, those who dare to the power, uh, have to pay their own price. And uh, even if they are aware about it, they do it. Otherwise, what you told, uh, the um, throat of the free speech will be strangled. So, I'd say, okay, the, the thing goes in that way. Now, I want to have my last question to uh, Amir, that if um, you, have, you are given an opportunity to write a rebel poem, would you, how do you react to it? I'm given opportunity all the time and I do write it. You know, it's like... Uh, barbarians. Barbarians, uh, yeah, maybe I can read it to you. And uh, when the city is overturned, it's all uh, basically political, but it's not necessarily politics because it's applying everywhere. And uh, maybe I'll read this poem, it's, uh, so we shift from theorizing to a little bit of poetry. And maybe also we can take some uh, questions from the audience. Yes, yes, I'll, I'll ask. Well, you give it, I'll ask them. Uh, in between, uh, I would like to... Uh, I would like to uh, ask our uh, erudite audience if they would like to ask any questions, like Swaraj Mishra is here and uh, Mr. Arath Jivitesh. Uh, now I give the mic to Mr. Arath. Actually, I have no much to ask, but thing is um, to Hasnan or any any of um, Israel. When you write against establishment, rebel poet against establishment, because of uh, Israel is a very difficult country, fighting war every day, surrounded by the hostile forces. So also, I'm talking Bangladesh point of view. Bangladesh also. Uh, is also like uh, fundamentalists are also, they are not, sometimes they are in power. When G.R. Uh, Rahman was there, they are in power. So my point is, uh, how fundamentalist, because it's very dangerous, because uh, they can use fatwa against you, like uh, Taslim, Nassim, that lady, uh, poet, or author's story, she writes and she's away from Bangladesh. Years, she can't take, go back. When India also failed to give her asylum. My point is, in that context, what Mr. Manu asked very correctly, do you think that you can write and escape the guillotine? Uh, I don't It's very tough to escape the eyes of the uh, uh, tyrant. I would say, not the power, I would say tyrant. Uh, that's why, and the tyrant are two kinds, as I said. Uh, there are many kinds, actually. The fundamentalist also are tyrant. Look, look at that Humayun Azad, because of his free thinking, because of his talking against fundamentalism, writing against fundamentalism, he was killed, he was chopped. If you remember, I wrote a book on him. He was chopped. He was chopped from here, here, and the profusely he was bleeding, and y you can't imagine what really happened. And obviously, Toslim was uh, uh, exiled. Uh, but poets do not stop. Uh, they want to write. Recently, Bangla Academy asked me to write a poem, send a poem. So, as a the guy who acts, uh, he's the um, uh, assistant director 
of Bangla Akademi and he read the poem and he said, you live in the state and you are writing against, against the state? I said, well, I write my thoughts. It could go against anybody. I'm not writing directly against anyone. So when you are thinking clearly, it might go against many people. But poet don't, poets do not worry about that. And obviously, I'm not writing slogans. I'm writing poems. So there is a, uh, a bit of difference between slogans and poems. Uh, I have a poem about 1971. It's Shokunera uh, Bhaloase. Vultures are doing well. You know, last time I went to Poland, when I left Poland, and there was a big article in Polish with the same title, Vultures are doing well. They put the whole poem and said, Vultures are not only in Bangladesh, they are in Poland and everywhere. They want us to stop doing what we are doing. So I, got, I guess you got the answer. Thank you. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll read to you a poem. And this poem is a uh, chat with uh, Kavafis, with the famous uh, poem, Waiting for the Barbarians. In Kavafis' poem, uh, these barbarians never come. It's kind of, it describes a kind of a decadent society that, for whom the barbarians is a kind of solution. So they all wait for the barbarians to shake them, to make them alive again. In my poem, the barbarians do come, and you'll find out where from. But uh, what's funny is the, I don't specify. And uh, I was in China in, the, in some festival and uh, read the translations and said, no, you cannot read this poem, it's too subversive. And they, and they didn't because uh, actors should have uh, read the poems and they didn't allow them. And then I was in uh, Northern, Cy Northern Cyprus, you know, Turkish occupied Cyprus, and they were, like uh, emotionally offended. That's what you think of us? I said, no, I didn't write it about you, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> and I used to take uh, also this poem to students uh, in Israel, and I got uh, their responses. I said, who are the barbarians? And say, oh, it's the leftists, it's the Arabs, it's the religious people, uh, you name it. Let me read it to you, and then uh, I'll say something more. Yes. The Barbarians, round two. It was not in vain that we awaited the barbarians. It was not in vain that we gathered in the city square. It was not in vain that our great ones put on their official robes and rehearsed their speeches for the event. It was not in vain that we smashed our temples and erected new ones to their gods. As proper, we burnt our books that have nothing in them for people like that. As the prophecy foretold, the barbarians came and took the keys to the city from the king's hand. But when they came, they wore the garments of the land and their customs were the customs of the state. And when they commanded us in our own tongue, we no longer knew when the barbarians it come to us. So who are the barbarians? Let the reader decide. Well, when uh, I can tell what I meant. Uh, they, they said uh, it's the Arabs, it's the, te no, everybody thinks uh, it's the leftists, it's the whatever. The Jews, the God knows. And I told them, listen, this kind of uh, barbarians that you suddenly find out it's amongst us. Yeah? We are the barbarians, but it's not just we are the barbarians. Each of us is to look inside and find his own barbarians to deal with. Then we'll be in a better place. Uh, Mr. Hoare, you mentioned that as a poet you have autonomy. You strongly feel about it, you write it. But when there are dangers or um, apprehensions, apprehensions around, after writing the poem, do you feel relaxed after that? That any you have jotted down, you feel relaxed after that? Even though the dangers around continue? Uh, this, uh, threat, threat perception. Oh. 
great reception. Despite that, you well, feel relaxed? I, of course, uh, it's a, the f if you really manage to say what you have to say, and you start a dialogue, and uh, talk to people's minds and hearts, of course, you are happy about this. This is wh what you accomplished. It doesn't mean the struggle is over. There are more poems that are uh, dealing with this kind of stuff, and I will not, it's not a reading uh, session, so I will not. But uh, I, c I went on reading, you know? I went on writing about these kind of uh, things because uh, I thought, okay, I have to do my share. I have to respond to this. And this came at a certain time when in Israel, I will not go into it, but uh, I didn't write uh, this kind of poems before. You know, so I was responding to, to what, what was happening around me, definitely. And uh, did I solve the problem? No, but I made some people think. Let me add a little bit here. Um, I wrote a lot of poems, uh, probably about 3,000 poems. My collector poems recently came out in two volumes. Each of these volumes is 560 pages, so about <laughs> so some of them are really open, but I, I, I read two of them today, Ami Khabo, I Will Eat, right? Another, When God is Dead. I'm not talking about the God, I'm not talking about, you know, you, you understood that poem. But um, Humayun Azad, he wrote, Shab Kisu Nostu De Rodhigare Jabe. It's not a evil poem, but it still it is. Shab Kisu, everything will go on to the thug sand. Is it not gone? He already said, look, everything is going on to the people. They are destroying us. And we did not listen to him. And they are destroying us. And as he said, the barbarians, we are destroying ourselves. So poetry, through rebel poetry, or through whatever the poetry, the uh, uh, great poetry, I would say, would always, always looks at the future. Obviously, it gives us the well-written ancestry or well-written our, our past, obviously. But future it's, is somehow telling you, ah, that future is coming. Be careful about it. Uh, with this, uh, I must uh, thank uh, Amir for uh, his uh, amazing uh, description of his uh, poem as well as uh, insightful thoughts. And so also, uh, friend uh, um, Mr. Hassan Abdullah um, speaking about his experience uh, and from their Bangladesh literature. And uh, we are very much thankful to both of them. And we wish that uh, every time they come and they give us, enlighten us every year. And uh, I'm so glad uh, and uh, my heartfelt congratulations to both of you. Thank you very much.